specifically Northeast Ohio and Youngstown. I talked a little bit about, you know, um, you co-hosting Youngstown Fight Night. Yeah. Um, and also the YoungstownBoxingNews.com. But before I get into that, you start we, we start talking, man. The boxing scene, and i got to give you kudos because a couple years ago when we were running ideas by each other, when I was still doing my first show, um, you were like, man, I got something in the pipeline. I haven't started it yet. It was right before you, you started doing the YoungstownBoxingNews.com. And, like, since you've done that, I've seen Kelly Dominguez start their show, and you co-hosted with uh, – is Fight Night with Vinny O'Neill? Yeah, Vinny O'Neill, yeah. It was – was there nobody doing this in Youngstown a few years ago? I mean, you know, when when Kelly was real champion, you had people. Um, Jack Lowe tells it like this. Kelly's doing, you know, coming up through the ranks. And you'd have to beg reporters, hey, come out, give this kid some uh, credibility here, some published time. Um, but once Kelly had that win um, over uh, uh, oh, the, the fight before uh, Jermaine Taylor. Miranda. Um, uh, dogs. Um, Ed, Edson Miranda. Edison Miranda. Before that fight with Edison Miranda, it was nonstop. Of um, after that fight, you, they, they couldn't get the reporters to leave. I mean, you know, they they if Kelly had to go to the bathroom, they follow Kelly into the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy that it took that long for the reporters to catch on the Edson Miranda fight. Because I was in Disneyland for the uh, Max Tuche fight. When did you hear about this story when Kelly's dad got kicked in the kicked by the horse? What? <laughs> oh my god! How many dogs do you got going on over there? Man, dude, the smaller the dog, the louder they are. All right, it's all good. So this is a great story. Ke- Kelly was fighting at Disneyland on the undercard of the Arce fight. And yeah, Arce, yeah. If you remember, Arce was a, a guy who came into the ring on a horse. And it, okay. We're in, and we're in Southern California. We're at the pond in Anaheim. And Kelly's getting ready to fight uh, a former Olympian, Max Sertuche, who was running his mouth the whole time. And I guess in the back, the horse is, like, getting all riled up. And uh, Mr. Pavlik got, get, ends up getting kicked by it and almost took uh, his dad's leg off. Kelly tells a story on, on our podcast we did together. It's hilarious. But that's so Youngstown. Yeah, but the, he, that's also the fight Kelly lo- left his check in the hotel room. Did oh my you know, gosh! Did you know that? I know. I you know what? I, I watch your podcast with him, but I, you know, sometimes you know stuff uh, kind of use you know you kind of like forget like you know you're kind of like listening in the background or whatever. Yeah. But um, so it's more like a Ricky Henderson kind of deal. Ricky, dude, to think though that like uh, so we're in Disneyland, the whole crowd is chanting Mexico, right? Um, yeah. Jake Smith, Robbie K. Um, flew from Ohio to come see this fight with, with me. And the whole tr- crowd's chanting Mexico. It's the fight where Kelly knocked Zertuche out on his feet, like cold. It's one of the craziest knockouts in the seventh round. Zertuche gets starched, and then we start chanting Ohio, O-H-I-O, right there. And I, I thought he was a star then. You know, by that time, I had been out of Youngstown for a few years. To think, though, that he wasn't getting pub until after that is crazy. And that's the that's the Youngstown media, you know. What I mean, they they um, you know, they they use Kelly um when he was a name, and when Kelly was no longer fighting and was a name, um, they did him dirty, man. They 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 did Kelly dirty, and um, Kelly no owes nothing to the Youngstown media. Um, if he makes this comeback, I hope that he's tight lipped with them and does everything that he has to do on the punchline because to him, I would have nothing to do with the Youngstown media. Yeah, that that's a beautiful thing about the evolution of technology in the last 10 years, though, is this. I've, I've heard podcasting be referred to as new media, like yeah. in the realm of just because of, it, you know, there's no restrictions. There's no filtering our voices. There's nobody saying we can or can't say anything. But more importantly, there's no narrative that's created for us that we have to abide by, like the media locally or nationally with boxing. They're looking for clickbait. They're looking for things to for people to click on and downloads um but kelly man that was the biggest thing for me you know when kelly was going through that the stuff and then not only to mention where we come from that the name youngstown has a certain ring to it as well i would just think to myself the people who would talk shit about a guy that they don't know and this is kind of a testament to how i live my life even if they're a famous person they've done 
some terrible things in the news, but it's debatable, like it, it might be hearsay, I don't judge them because I always tell myself I wasn't with them. And in this case with Kelly, I know him, and, and you know him. You know he's a good guy. Oh, to see, absolutely. To see people play that role just to get clicks, it's there. Ha- it's, it not only is it unethical, but it just kind of bums me out. I, I, I tell people all the time, man, it, it, if you were at a restaurant, you saw Kelly Pavlik there, he, he's not going to be dressed like he's bigger than life. Um, he more than likely will probably be wearing um, a pair of uh, title uh, wind pants and uh, some kind of boxing T-shirt or something like that. He, he's, he's probably going to be – he's not going to be with an entourage. Um, he's going to be with um, friends, and he's going to be approachable. Yeah. And he's going to make it feel like he's approachable, and he's not going to make you feel like he's just – um, having to play the part to be nice, you know, sign autograph, take a picture, man. I mean, I talked to James Dominguez, and James Dominguez tells us when they go to these weigh-ins, man, Kelly is a star there, but Kelly will also wait around, take a picture with every last person, sign every last autograph. And it's a shame that Kelly gets um, held in a higher praise in, in cities like Las Vegas um, in New York than he does in his hometown, a town that he never left, unlike some other people who made it big in this area just to come crawling back. Kelly never left. Yeah, did he leave to go be with Robert Garcia for a little bit? Yes, but th- that was different. That was circumstantial. You know, that was that was business trip. That was business related. Kelly never left Youngstown. Kelly never as much as people try to push him away and say, you know what, Kelly, maybe it's time to get away and train, you know, and, and get out of this city. But Kelly never turned his back on the city and that had the city kind of turned its back on him. It's just wrong. And what's funny is my relationship with Kelly is um, I didn't get to know Kelly until after the fact. I know. After it was all done. And um, and that, that's what's amazing to me is, is I got to I get to know the real Kelly. You know, what I mean, I'm, I've co-hosted twice with him. Um, he's been on my show. We, we keep in touch, you know, time to time on Facebook. Um, even when he, he teased his comeback, I, I didn't go out of my way to try to get a, you know, a quote from him. As I say, hey, when Kelly is ready to announce, A, he's going to do it on the punchline. But B, I know he's getting blown up right now. I don't want to have enough respect for that man, um, being that I know him a little bit on that personal level, um, through Vinny O'Neill and, and James Dominguez and everything and, and the, and what we're doing, you know, with the, uh, punchline and, uh, the fight night in Youngstown. Yeah, it's a cool thing because I've known both of you guys since I was a kid individually. And so, yeah. like, when, and, you know, you get a lot of people, I mean, since you, you're in the new media space, you're, you're present on social media, on Twitter, because of the scene. Um, when, you, when you hear people talk down about social media, do you agree that they might not know how, they, they just might not know how to use it? Because that's an example of, and, and you and I doing this now as well, through screens, using social media is an example yeah. of the positive components of networking, building relationships telling positive stories what's your opinion on that oh no it's, it's sh- social media is a great thing i mean the the relationships i've made on facebook uh through the boxing community mm-hmm. um through the punchline fight talk and and being you know seeing people on the punchline them interacting with me it, it's almost become like a new family for me yeah. man you know i mean we we share stories and it's not all the time just boxing stories man it's life stories you know with stuff dealing with that what we're facing man uh stuff you know with uh racial barriers still i mean if people think that racism still don't exist they're kidding themselves yeah. um and uh you know um just, just to, you know, to see the, you know, meeting people on different sides of the country now and seeing, you know, how they're viewing the fight scenes over there, um, life over there. And just it, it's just really brought my life full circle. And really, John, you know me, man, I've never left Youngstown and I never probably will. And uh, so just to know that hey, I know these people over this country now that, hey, if I ever do start traveling, I'm, I'm going to start meeting some of these people out, man, maybe starting to go some more fights. But no, uh, you're right, man. Uh People who want down social media, they don't know how to use it. Um, I think some, I think some media places, you know, some media people don't know how to use it. Um, they're viewing social media as just a way to be the first with the story, not the most accurate, though. Mm, that's a great point, man. I'd love, dude, I'd love for it to see, and I know it's gonna happen. Timing's everything. I can't wait for to see you start going to like the past Ohio events because I love the work, man. When you went to, you went to, the, I read your story about Salem Boxing club and like the untold forgotten stories and man that's a powerful thing and the story you did on the little girl who's a boxing fan who's a fighter and you know i know guys i i follow dalton rosa because of you i follow Pablo salinas because of you um you you're kind of like my pipeline 
of the yeah. local talent and local scene. Um, but but you're right. The the people who talk negative, I think, on anything. And man, the, you covered a lot there, man. The the racial division, the 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 media unwilling to announce social media as a positive thing, maybe because they're old time reporters, they don't know how to use it. They feel like maybe they the buck passed them. But I think in, in everything you got to be open minded, man. Like the idea of uh, the you mentioned Vinny O'Neill. That kid wasn't he boxing when we were kids? I mean, yeah, he he's been. I mean, he's forty years old. He just turned forty years old. Um, still doing it, man. Still doing it well. And, and what's funny is, and I don't know if you saw, but he had to cancel his upcoming fight. Um, uh, he's got an injury, man. He said he'll be back though. He said he'll be back. And and what's funny is the guy that he was gonna fight was gonna be a kid named uh, Mike Conway from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. It's someone I met through going all these fights. He's got a brother named Matt, who's a very nice looking prospect in Pittsburgh. I think he's 16 and 0 right now. Um, but the Conway brothers have called into our show, and then I was about to be thrust into the situation of seeing these two fight, even though it was going to be a great fight, you know. And the way I looked at it, though, is it was going to be easy to get quotes from the winner and the loser. But, um, I, I you know, Vinny's my boy, you know, but I, I think highly of the Conway brothers. So it was just going to be an awkward situation for me. But at the end of the day, man. It's it's the business, man, and you know it's called the hurt business, you know. But um, that's what I love about the sport is nine times out of ten, when these guys, you know, at the end of the fight, man, you, you're starting to see a lot of these pictures now, social media after the fight, man. They they're taking pictures with their arms around one another, both their faces busted I up, love and, it. Stuff, and and, uh, and they respect each other. Um, when uh, Caleb Plant won that IBF title. Um, you know, and he had to bury his daughter young, you know, at a young age or whatever. And, and the guy that he beat for the title to see, you know, the cameras on them, to see him come up to Kayla plan after he took his belt, you know, and say, you know, um, it may have been for the interim belt or, or however it went down. But um, to hear him say, you know, you did this for your daughter, you know, you, you fulfilled your promise to her to become a real title, hold us, you know. And, and to hear Kayla plant, know this guy's struggle of he's trying to get his family um, over into America, and he said to him, you know, hey, whatever you're going to need from me and my people or whatever, our people will get together, um, we'll get this figured out legally for you. And so at the end of the day, man, both these guys know it's bigger than boxing. Yeah, it is, man. I like, there's so many quotes. The older I get, the the more I start falling more in love with, like, the history of boxing and the, the, the quote-unquote historians. Like, when you hear, when I was younger, man, I don't know, I don't really like Teddy Atlas, but... As he gets older and the more I listen to him and him on the Rogan podcast for the I think I watched that podcast maybe like five, six times when he was talking about. Um, did you watch that one? Did you listen to that one with when Rogan had on Atlas? Um, I didn't I didn't listen to his one with Atlas. Um, you know, that's yeah. the thing, man. I, and it's just like how you said to, to me that I become your pipeline to local information. You know what I mean? And um Honestly, man, like I see you posting a lot of stuff. Um, you're keeping me in tune with what's going on over on that side of the you know, world over there in Australia. Um, I see when you got your people fighting or uh, about to be fighting, yeah. um, your boy Luke Jackson or whatever. And then you got to have hurt. him on your show, man. He, he's, it, his, his story is so endearing, dude. If you can arrange that, man, definitely. I would, I would love to have that happen. For um, sure. Good stuff. For sure. But, but Atlas was talking about, the Holyfield and Tyson matchup. You there? Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Atlas was Atlas was talking about that Mike Tyson's greatest strength was being able to see in others what he didn't have. Um, hold on, real quick. I I got I got taken off task for a minute. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. What did what did Atlas have to say there? Atlas, we were talking about like the endearing history of boxing and how it yeah. was way beyond the ring. Atlas was talking about Mike Tyson's greatest strength wasn't his power, wasn't being a fighter. It was being able to see in others what he didn't possess. And he said that that night he bit Hol- Holyfield, it wasn't because he was a mean guy or he was this, this savage. It was because he wanted a way out because he knew that Holyfield had something that he didn't have. And he knew that Holyfield could overcome things. It's a, it was a powerful, powerful interview. Um, and you know what? And it, it, Tyson's career ended on you know quitting on a bar stool or what or on a on a boxing stool. You know what I mean? And um, I would never call Tyson a quitter. You know what I mean? Um, but no, I I think he's absolutely right, man. He was looking for a way out that night. How crazy is it that Tyson, when he lost to 
Ohio boy Buster Douglas, he was only 23. Like that's a little, that's a young kid. That kid, he reached his prime. Because I mean, we could all agree he didn't. It didn't get any bigger after he lost to like Douglas. But he was only 23 at the time, and they say a heavyweight really doesn't mature into their own until later on in their career. It's some that's fascinating to me how he was never able to rebuild. Well, and the thing about a heavyweight is, um, they say the last thing to go is your punch. You know, it, you know, um, um, and so heavyweights, you know, kind of rely on the punch. But if you watch Tyson, man, Tyson rely on head movement. I mean, he had speed and stuff like that. So maybe it did break down. You know, a little bit uh-huh. sooner. I've seen guys like break down early, man. I mean, Fernando Vargas was kind of, you know, I think when you peak at such a young age, sometimes, you know, you're going to downslide a little bit sooner as a possibility. I mean, yeah, Fernando right. Vargas thrust in such huge fights for such a young age. I mean, um, Trinidad, I like Trinidad. Yeah, De La Hoya. So I, I think sometimes, you know, you run into that situation where you peak at such a young age, you know, um, you know, hey, low age, high mileage. Yeah. Hey, what is what's going on with Salinas' career? Because um, yeah, re, re, rebuilding it right now. Um, you know, he took that loss. You know, about a year ago in March in Youngstown, that was that was a hard fight against a crafty left-hander. The Youngstown sanction, the the young, the Ohio Athletic Association, um, is hard to build a resume in the state. They don't like guys build a resume with easy fights. Um, so luckily they got him with a promotional team in New Jersey where he's able to go out and get some fights over there now with an easier um, – with the – Hold on. You there? <laughs> All good? Yep. All right, let's rock and roll. I'm going to press record again. All right, cool. Yeah, so you're talking about fighters burning out and people hitting their peaks. With um, I'm gonna say a couple names. I just want I want you to say the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Adelaide Adelaide Bird. Oh, joke. <laughs> All right, Amir Khan. Peaked. Ah, that's Peaked. it. That's it. Joshua Kelly. One word. Mm, man, because I want to say uh, sky's the limit. Sky's the yeah. limit, but that, that's you know, it's three right, words. Let's, let's start there, man. Dude, I just I just saw Kelly for the first time last week. He yeah. was on the undercard of the Luke, I think it was the Lucas Brown fight. Man, and then I started messaging Kelly. I started messaging James. I was like, I tagged you, and I was like, who is this kid? So, so yeah, fill me in. How, how long have you known about him? Um, actually, what's funny is I I got to know about him when I started hyping up a. a Another fighter named um, um, uh, Taylor, Josh Taylor from Scotland. Okay. Um, the the Tartan Tornado or whatever. And um, what happened is is you know I started telling people about him, but people started talking about this uh, Josh Kelly, uh, thinking they were talking about this guy. Then I'm like, you know, I think I think you know we we're both talking about guys from the other side of the pond here, but you know there's some confusion here. And, and so I looked him up, and I was all like, man, both both these guys, you know. Both these Joshes are, you know, sky's the limit, but, um, no, he's, um, he's a complete package. You know what I mean? He, he can win fights, um, based on pure boxing ability, but he's also got some decent power, man. And, and that's the thing, man, is power. Um, it's easy to have power when you're starting up your career against, um, D list opposition, F list opposition. And that's something that Popo Salinas has found out to get back on Popo is yeah. as I step up, I'm not going to knock these guys out. And um, if you saw his last fight and you listened to him talk, or, you know, when we talked, you know, after his fight, um, he that was the most proud I think he's ever been at his point of uh, his career is he said, you know, I, it took me a few rounds to get this guy out, but I took my time because I wanted to show that I can box. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what people don't realize is you got to be able to box when you get into that upper levels, man. You're, you're not going to be able to just knock guys out. How many of these big fights do we see really end in stoppage? Yeah. You know, I mean. There, there's a reason why if you look at the betting odds on these fights, there's usually an over under set at nine and a half rounds and usually the um the underdogs the uh under on these big fights. And I think I think uh I think when I looked the uh Canelo Daniel Jacobs fight, I think it was plus two twenty maybe for under nine and a half rounds. Did you see the rehydration clause that Danny had assigned? Really? Uh I, I enlighten me on this. This is wild. Okay, so I 
I, I don't know Danny personally, but I'm friends with his nutritionist, former world champion Chris Algieri. He's a big dude, right? Yeah, he's a he's hey, a big dude. Who 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 is this nutritionist? Chris Algieri. He just announced a fight today. Yeah, just announced it at MSG. Yeah, Algieri. yeah. yeah. You got to get him on your show too. I'll, I'll I'll link you up with Chris and Luke. Okay. But but Chris, you know Chris has fought Pacquiao, that war with Ruslan Provodnikov. He's fought Amir Khan, but. He started working with Danny Jacobs a couple years ago um, on because Chris is a certified nutritionist, and they have his they, they have his weight. I think he's fighting at what what is this one one sixty? Um, probably sounds about right. Yeah, and w- his loss when he fought Triple G, all these rumors came out that Danny walked into the fight at weighing one hundred eighty five pounds. So Canelo's camp got a hold of this. And they, they said, we'll fight you, but under a rehydration clause that the night of the fight, you can't weigh more than 170. And, That's ridiculous, man. And, and then they made him sign a, a contract. And this is the craziest shit. Every pound over, allegedly, he has to pay three. It's either $30,000 or three hundred. dollars I think it might be $300,000 every pound. I, just to mess with his head, they did this. That uh, that blows my mind, but hey, that's what being the A side and the biggest uh you know person in the sport you know does for you. I mean, just like Floyd Mayweather used to be able to you know mess with these guys and and be able to get certain gloves you know pushed out of the thing. And you know, I I learned so much about this business talking to James Dominguez and Kelly Pavlik, and um, I mean those two just have those two you know right in my backyard or whatever. I mean, dude, this is Youngstown, man. I mean, this is this is amazing to me. You know, I mean. You got your thing represent Youngstown, Australia, and even though you're kind of, you're just even though you're not strictly boxing and MMA, but you you're, you're pretty much I'd say 75 percent of stuff you know comes comes down to that it seems like, um, and and I think your love for the sport. You remember uh, Lalo's basement? One you punch, you knocked me out with one punch to the body. <laughs> one punch, dude, I'm blown away by that. Who knocked you out to the body? Me and you, I think in Lalo's basement, we just grabbed on some gloves, and you body shot me, man. I, I remember I remember we used to box, and nobody had any lesson. We literally just, we would, we would mimic what we saw on TV. And, and Lalo, <laughs> but, oh, God bless it, Lalo's soul. If he's listening to this, I miss you, old friend. But Lalo <laughs> was so delusional, he took that. And he did the the KO boxing tournament and got starched in like thirty oh. seconds. And, and that's something that um we had Sammy Calderon on our show, me and Vinny. And um that's something Sammy talked about is these guys all of a sudden they win the KO. So unless you're Chris Koval, who went on had a successful career, but Koval was just a freak of nature. Um <laughs> But no, I mean, and that and that's the thing, man. I mean, but I I would love to see Youngstown bring that back. Um, you know, the KO tournament thing's been around for about three years now. Wow. And um, and I think with the direction, I I think the sports as popular as it is ever. Um, you know, thanks to the ESPN Plus app, thanks to the Zone. Um, I think the sports making a true comeback. Um, globally, it's huge in Europe, and I I think you can get some good numbers to do the to do the KO tournament. And I think a lot of these kids, even though MMA is up there in popularity too, I think people realize, man, the, um, some of the most successful MMA fighters right now have a great stand-up game. Yeah, you have to, you, you know, you, you can't, you can't go and MMA is no longer a one trick pony sport. You have, yeah. to be, you have to be solid everywhere, but I always find myself favoring and cheering for the striker. Like, do you know, like Jorge Masvidal, his stand-up. Yeah. The kid, he grew up in the backyard boxing. Nate Diaz is boxing. Um, there, there's a kid, there's a kickboxer named Gaston Bolanis who fights in Bellator. You want to see some striking at the highest level? It, I like the striking that isn't all relying on power, but timing and patience. So you see a guy who stays in the pocket, doesn't panic, and then is able to counter. This kid Gaston Bolanis, man, you could go to, when we get off this, go to Twitter. They've been tweeting this highlight from last week. You're just looking at it and you're, it's almost, it's art. It's artwork. And I'll tell you what, Dalton Rosser right now, you know, he's in Bellator. And um, when I talk to him, man, he'll tell you right now, he, he's getting to where he is with this stand-up game. He takes very big pride in, you know, being able to box and stuff like that. Um, you know, he's got that wrestling background. But, I mean, you, as I said, you, you said you follow him now because of me. I mean, that kid just works hard at everything. I mean, there's I don't think there's a moment that goes by that kid's not at a gym. That's awesome, man. Newcastle, right? 
Is it Newcastle? Newcastle. Man, he was running back, I think, for Laurel High School over there. Um, okay. Toted the rock, man. Um, I bet you he had been a beast to bring down, man. I, I, I couldn't imagine bringing that dude down. He's, he's, that kid's solid, man. But you know what? Yep. Um, just a good dude, though, man. I mean, you, you know, when, when you talk to him or whatever like that, he, you don't get that, that, you know, I'm better than you kind of vibe from him. I mean, I'm sure he gives off that vibe to his future opponents. Um, but, um, you know, around me, man, respectful. Um, always thankful for what I do for him and stuff. So, um, he, he's going to go a long way in the sport, um, inside and outside the octagon. Yeah, did you – you mentioned Chris Pilval. <laughs> Do you know I went to – he was my first bully when we were kids. Really? Yeah, we all <laughs> – dude, that kid – It's we went to St. Anthony's together. Yeah. And he was like I think twice the size of me, and he was younger. And I remember – like because he had a bunch of brothers. Mike yeah. Mike uh, his one his youngest brother was a good athlete. He played baseball. I, I don't know. Jeff. Jeff was the youngest. I don't know if he, had, he ever did anything, but Chris, he did, didn't he end up fighting Shannon Briggs? Uh, he, have, <laughs> dude, he, he actually has one of those wild resumes, man. I mean, he he fought some names. He may have fought Shannon Briggs. I mean, that, I mean, just like uh, what's his name uh, from young, uh, from Warren? Billy Lyle. Um, well, Billy Lyle, but who's the guy? Um, oh man, the dude from Warren who's fought everybody. Zach Page. Uh, Zach Page fought Tyson Fury. Zach Page. I'm unfamiliar with Zach Page. I don't know. Zach who Page, man, he runs like um like kind of like a a boxing thing out downtown boxing club. But I think they're trying to get him a place to warn to run his Zach Attack boxing program, mm. and um he he trains guys. But um, I mean he he's fought he's fought a who's who's you know on the thing. But yeah, he uh he fought Tyson Fury in his career. What, where's Youngstown Boxing Club at? Um, uh, downtown boxing club. Um, if you go downtown Youngstown, um. Uh, I'm trying to think, man. Um, okay, so you know when you're downtown Youngstown, there's that place I got the um, – man, I, I'd call them the pimp suits in the window. Yes, I do know. Yeah. The, it used to be called the, the round and round or something. Okay. It, it, so you, you go down the sidewalk right alongside that building, and, and there's a door there that will have like um, a USA boxing kind of poster, and, and it's right in there, man. So so I think the way the building – you know, the side street goes down on a slope, so you enter this one at the ground level – and this, you know what I mean? But this street's, you know, the first, you know, the, the top level, you know what I mean? So it's actually underneath that place. Who runs that? Um, that would be, um, uh, Larry, uh, uh, what's his name? Larry starts with an F. Um, his, his place, Tom Cordell, Sammy Calderon trains people down there. That's where Danny uh-huh. Rosenberger trains. That's where Dalton does his, um, training for boxing down there. Okay. Um, so whenever you see videos of, uh, Dalton catching mitts at like a, at a dark kind of dungeon looking boxing gym. That's where he's at there, right downtown Youngstown. And, uh, yeah. So you got that place. You got Burnside Boxing and Struthers. Um, you know, you got the Salem Boxing Club, which, you know, um, beautiful boxing gym, you know, in downtown, uh, Salem. Um, and that's the forgotten place, man. But you mentioned earlier, you know, I got a chance to go out there. I got to meet the kids there. And, um, a lot of those kids started boxing because they got him bullied. And the uh, the owner started, uh, you know, boxing when he was younger, so he got bullied. So he, he takes, you know, um, he's very prideful of that, you know, teaching these kids, you know, this is how you defend yourself. Now, just don't go out, you know, starting fights. Now you know how to do this, but at least now you get the confidence to stand up to a bully. Yeah, that's a powerful thing. My my dad always used to tell me it takes it takes more energy to get into a fight than it does to just say I'm sorry. And I think that that – that was, that's something it's tough when you're young, man. Kids are brutal. Kids are tough. I've been, you know, I, I, everybody gets bullied. And I think what's your opinion? I, I think it's necessary, actually. I'm not going to tell any young person listening to this to go out and bully somebody, but I'm going to tell the young person who's getting bullied to use it as fuel. Because when I look back on the people that he and, and dude, it, ha- it still happens with social media, man. Like, yeah, pe- people are cowards out there. But if you have the proper people around you, if you have the proper discipline and communicating you could use that bullying to your advantage um and you know what i uh and i think everybody's guilty of doing some bullying at some point in their life i mean yeah, for sure it, it's, it's kids, boys are gonna be boys yeah. um but you know you're sure. you're absolutely right though and um you know i take a lot of positive message that you you put on facebook and stuff like that and you've gone on me sometimes i get hard on some of the people around youngstown do stupid <laughs> things um you know you open my eyes though Listen, yeah, but um, I, want, 
God bless, man. So everybody, there's a drug problem here in Ohio, especially specifically around this Youngstown area, man. There's a drug problem. And dude, I, I, I wish with my heart, man, I do the struggles real for some of these people, man. And I, and I back these people to get healthy, but I have no respect for people who put their kids in danger to do drugs. Yeah. Um, I can't, you know, as a father, as you see, you know, as a father myself, say hi, Victoria. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, um, when you knew me in high school, who would ever thought that I'd be dead? You know what I mean? I mean, um, but, Come on, man. but it, it's awesome and it's an eye-opening experience. And when you see people that put their own kids in danger, you know, like, how can you do that, man? Um, it, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking, man. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking when I see a story. There's, there's new stories every day in Youngstown of child endangerment. This is the third time it's happened. Like, what's this kid doing back with this person? You know, I mean, I don't know all the circumstances involved, whatever. But sometimes it's hard not to maybe call people trash. And even though I should maybe keep it to myself. But um, so I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to do better at that. But no, you're right, though. Bowling, man, it, it's it's people go through struggles, John. Um, yeah. I've gone through a lot of struggles. I mean, um and one thing you'll notice about me on my Facebook is I really don't like um, post too much about my boxing show on there on my personal page um, about my thing because um, there's haters out there, man. And, and some of your biggest haters are your friends. Um, man, sadly, you know, what I mean, some, some of your closest friends secretly don't want to see you succeed. And yeah. I've seen you post and you posted stuff like that to yourself. And actually, that's what made me take heart to everything was when I saw you say, like, your friends are supposed to be your biggest cheerleaders. Yeah, they are, man. And yeah, but a lot of cases they're not. You know what I mean? Whenever I see you post something, man, I always try to share everything you do. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, I mean, I'm proud of you. As you know, uh, as Liberty people, man, I'm I'm proud of what Liberty graduates have gone on to do. Yeah, did you, you've always been though, man. You've always been a supporter of of, of the the local grown talent. It's not, just, you know what I'm saying? I think that's just in you. I don't know if you've ever done a family tree or n go back <laughs> with your genetics, but. There had to be something along the lines of like a sort of local politician or some sort of because at the end of the day, you're, you're pretty much a coach. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You're a writer, coach. You like motivating people in your own way, but on a positive because even the negative you highlighting the drug issue, which it is a really bad problem. And it do every day somebody either dies or hurts somebody in our hometown because of drugs. That's helping people. Like when you started posting it, I started doing my research. I wasn't aware that it was that bad. So when I commented, oh, when I first commented to you about it, <laughs> that was almost my own ignorant, impulsive sort of decision making. And then I researched it. I was like, shit, man, maybe these people, you know, if there's no systems in place for rehabilitation, maybe being out it isn't such a bad thing. Yeah, no, you're right, man. But um, no, but you know what? Um, Unless there's kids involved, I, I root for these people to get the help they need. Um, for the people that um, do this stuff and endanger their kids' lives, I I wish Narcan was never in the, it, it invented. I mean, as sadly as I as that sounds for me to say that, you know what I mean. Um, but you know what? For there are successful stories. Um, I've known people that beat it, um, turn their lives around. You know what I mean. So it's ignorant for me to sit there and say, you know, another Narcan, you know, success story. But um, I only ride the ones hard that have endangered their kids. I guess that's kind of my shtick as a father, you know. But, you know, as you mentioned, you know, being like almost like an ambassador for Youngstown and um, I don't get paid to do what I do. You know, um, maybe I don't put myself out there as much as I should to try to get myself some more recognition. I, everybody always says, like, you know, that's you who does that. You know, I, I do kind of ghostwrite a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, it's funny is um, my sister tuned into our show. Today. We had a big show with uh, the people from Penguin City Brewery on, man, yeah. uh, Penguin City Beer. I mean, dude, if you watch that show, what a story, man. I mean, for for them to build this thing up in, in such little time, to actually have a name of a beer that they said was too good to pass up and then make a beer, you know. Um, yeah. They did it backwards. I mean, it's wild. Um, <laughs> it's completely wild. You know, I was just blown away, you know. And um, maybe I don't put myself out there as much, you know. And, and maybe I will actually get to be another Youngstown success story because I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, I got all this great stuff going on in my life because I got this fight night in Youngstown. I got this website, man. I still struggle day to day. Um, I'm actually not where I want to be in my life, but, I'm you know, I'm, I'm trending in the right direction. 
Um, so maybe that's why I don't put myself out there as much because I just want to make it. I don't want to make it seem like my life is all these positives. When I'm telling you right now, man, for every positive I've had, I've had at least three failures. It's 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 a uh, it's a common story though with a lot of people. A lot of people I talk to, a lot of people I know who are striving for a goal. Nobody ever is going to sit there and say, "I've made it." There's no such thing. There's no there's no making it. It's about this con constant quest of inquisition, this constant quest of developing ourselves. But that's what makes people successful, the, the understanding. It's not an object, a house, a car, a bank account. I think success is more about how somebody is wired, how they think, and the impact they have on others. In my opinion, that's what success is. So you're already being on that path, especially the adversity. Man, coming from our hometown, dude, man, you're right. You said – my whole family's still there. I go, I come home once a year. And yeah. Some of the close friends I have now, I didn't meet until a couple years ago. I didn't grow up like a, a couple guys. Um, th this dude online, Brian Figgis, you know, shout out to Brian. He he's G's musical. He makes music. He's a former Golden Gloves amateur champion. He went to Ursuline. I didn't meet him until a couple years ago. But every I time think I go, yeah, I think he follows my website. Maybe yeah. yeah. He, dude, he's he's a great guy to get on your show. He, he's when he was 18, 19, he was fighting for championships in Youngstown. Nobody even would talk about it. But the point I was trying to make, though, is every time I go back every year, I could feel it in the air. Our town is starving for a kind of up, like health, wellness, vitality. Like Youngstown area is the downtown area has more and more eateries. Um, I think boxing plays into that. Boxing is, you know, what do they call it? Atlas says the ring is the chamber of truth. You can't lie in there. And I think that that has a positive trickle-down effect to the community, um, helping educate the people that it's not about hurting people. It's not about punching people. It's about, in my opinion, seeing how much I could develop from my last fight. And I look at fighters. That's how I look at it. Who is the better problem solver? No, you're, you're absolutely right, man. I mean, it, boxing is not about, you know, like, the whole mentality of, um, you know, as people say – kill or be killed you know what i mean and that, that's not what the sport's about and, and you're right man um there's a lot of people who go to boxing chips who are never going to get into a ring um but you know what it, there's a saying um you know who used to tell me this is uh sal Ponzio, joe Ponzio's dad um remember good old sal he said um hey we mean joe would go down there we'd work out you know what i mean in his basement they had a heavy bag and everything he'd go Man, awesome to see you guys train like a boxer because I'll tell you what, everybody should go through life training like a boxer because the stuff those guys go through is unreal. And this is coming from like a guy who cycled probably like 20 miles a day, you know what I mean? Um, but no, you're right, man. I mean, you, you mention it all the time, man. You're doing that cardio, um, you know, um, hitting the bag. You know, you call that your cardio workout, man, and, yep. you, you know, you go live for it. And um, I love watching you do that, man, and just, you know, watching you just hit the bag, hit the bag, hit the bag, man. And people do not realize how great of a workout that is. John, there is a great story today in, uh, in the Youngstown News about a lady who's teaching these boxing classes to people. Parkinson's. That Parkinson's. Did you see that? I mean, I that, that that's one of the most newsworthy things I've seen in Youngstown the past year. Probably the most newsworthy thing I've seen this town in. Uh, what, are we in 2019 right now? 2019. <laughs> I just don't want to I dude, I do not want to admit that my uh, 20th year class anniversary is uh, coming up, man. So I uh I just hate saying 2019. So the Parkinson story, the reason why I got into coaching boxing just put YouTube up too loud. Yeah. The re the reason why I started coaching, you know, general population boxing, not to fighters, but for people learning the basic fundamentals is because I have a degenerative brain disease that runs my family, Alzheimer's. And so you have a couple degenerative brain disease, Alzheimer's, you have Parkinson's, uh, there's a couple other ones. But studies are showing that doing things ambidextrously, right, left, left, right, yeah. rewiring different parts of the brain, and it's useful in helping people who are susceptible to these diseases. And that's why I started coaching it, man. And it's a narrative that I use with my clients. Um, because if you read these studies, they say, if you have this gene, do things opposite. So eat with your left fork if you use your right. Tie your shoes opposite if you do it the other way. For a guy like me, that does, that's not going to work. I need something applicable. I need something that I can find value in. So just holding pads and punching 
That's why I started coaching it. And, and take a look what it's done for a guy like Freddie Roach. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think that's the I think that's the biggest thing when it comes down to it. And Freddie Roach, I think, is pretty much attributed to him being able to keep you know going as well as he has and and kind of beat the old Parkinson. I mean, I want to say beat Parkinson's, but he's pretty pretty dang well you know functioning with it. Um, is because of the boxing training that he's doing with the guys. Yeah. So let's talk about before time is flying, brother. I wanted to talk about two things. Yeah. Who do you like? Who do you like in the Canelo Jacobs fight? I want you to tell me how it's going to end and who's going to win. Let's get to that first. And the second one, I want to talk about weight cutting overall. But let's let's do the let's do the weight cut first and end with the Jacobs Canelo fight. All right, all right. What's your opinion of weight cuts? Do you think that they're a good thing? And my roommate asked me to talk about this today. If weight cutting is such a major part in boxing, why isn't weight cutting a sport just by itself? Um, I'll tell you what's pretty wild. I didn't realize this till I started talking to the people in Pennsylvania, but it was just within, I think, the past 18 months, Pennsylvania used to – Pennsylvania just started day before weigh-ins. Pennsylvania used to be same-day weigh-ins. Oh, wow. um, yeah, that's wild. But um, I, I, I don't like seeing young kids being taught to cut weight. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm not in tune with the physicality as you are or Chris Algeri, you know, what kind of effects that has on the body. Um, but I think kids should almost be practically fighting at their natural weight. Um, it's hard, man. It, it, it's, it's always going to be around. There's no getting around the whole weight cut thing. I mean, Kelly Pavlik, there's, I mean, naturally with Kelly Pavlik, if, if guys fought with their natural weight classes, what would Kelly Pavlik probably have been like a cruiserweight? Walking around, maybe. I mean, the fact that this guy walked around, you know, you know, whatever, but fought at 160 at 6'3". That's Crazy. Wild. That's wild. Um, I, have, I mean, I don't have as much problem with cutting weight as guys who are staying in that weight class, but it's the catch weights that I hate. I think sometimes catch weights ruin boxing. Mm-hmm. When you Why got so? one guy, one with one guy who's kind of staying a little bit stronger, or another guy who's coming up naturally, or a guy who's going to be forced to come down in weight and be a little bit extra drained, you know what I mean? Uh, that that's what I hate about the sport. Um, you know, Kelly fighting Bernard Hopkins out of catch weight, that was no good for Kelly. And then the recipe of him being sick that night, and Kelly really had no chance in that fight. You know, um, it was a recipe for disaster. But he wasn't going to let the people down in Youngstown, and, and that's what pisses me off is. You know, when he went through that whole thing with Ray Mancini, uh, when Ray Mancini said, you better watch what you call fighting for peanuts. You know what I mean? When Kelly said he wasn't going to fight a left, a dangerous left-hander for, you know, what little purse they were offering him. You know what? You're risking your life to get into that ring. You know, I, Kelly earned the, the right at that point to demand whatever money he wanted to demand. And for Ray Mancini to say, uh, watch the Youngstown mentality of, you know, saying fighting for peanuts when the average, you know, annual income in this town might be, you know, $65,000. Um, when he doesn't realize that Kelly could easily pulled out of that fight against Bernard Hopkins, but knew that people in Youngstown invested a lot of money, uh, took time off of work to be at that fight. There was no way that he was going to let those people in Youngstown down. Yeah, that's, it's always tough when you get, kind of like there's is there still kind of beef between Ray and Kelly um I I I don't think uh as much I think Kelly's um I think Kelly's kind of gone the passive um route with that you know I mean I don't think Kelly has a problem with them um you know Ray's got an interesting show that he does right now the boom boom room uh Ray's boom boom room um he had Dolan Ross still on actually um he also had another uh, fighter from uh, Elwood City on uh, Rosalina Morales, who I've interviewed on my website. So sometimes I wonder if Ray's following my website, but uh, <laughs> um, that'd be cool if he is, man. You know, I mean, that's it, man. I, and I hate hearing beef between people, man. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Youngstown, we should be proud of it, man, and, and stick together. But I understand, you know, sometimes stuff gets blown up through the media. And when you're talking to the media, um, and not talking to that person directly. Sometimes you say some things that you, you know, might later re- regret. And, uh, I'm not sure if, you know, Ray regrets what he said. I'm not sure if Kelly regrets what they said, but I, I don't think there's really beef between the two anymore. Um, there might be some beef between James Dominguez though and Ray Mancini, <laughs> but, um, I, I'll, I'll tell you what though. Um, and I, I can't say it again. Just having James Dominguez and Kelly Pavlik, um, back me on what I do. The best thing ever is when I was on the punchline, you know, listening to the punchline, when I heard James Dominguez and Kelly just, you know, talk about how good my website is. I mean, 
Dude, that's the um, that's the biggest you know compliment you can get. Yeah, you can. It's it's what I was talking to a guy, a friend of mine now, Dr. Andy Galpin, and he was talking about this how, it, and he was speaking to anybody who's trying to create something or get notoriety or get recognized in their industry. And it's not about getting people to follow you, but it's about getting the respect of the peers within that industry. So to have guys like Kelly and James, kudos your website. That's just a trip. That's just a reflection of the work you've been putting in. But James Dominguez, hands down, my favorite follow on social media. So anyone? Oh, hilarious! <laughs> his, his his meme garden's got to be the size of the Orville Rodenbacher um, popcorn. Uh, you know, like, um, like he he's kind star, of like man. he's kind of like my fearless social media warrior because if i see a meme that i'm too cowardly to post i'll send yeah. it to him <laughs> <laughs> i mean dude, yeah, it, 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 i mean some of the stuff that he posts dude i mean it's real life situation i mean the elmo with the, the elmo with the uh with the goldfish crackers one i mean that's cool i mean how she was born you know <laughs> the hashtag get the strap <laughs> oh man strap season baby that's- uh He's referencing like the championship belt metaphorically into whatever, <laughs> right? Is that in the meme? Wrong? Championship meme, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, some belts are, you know, some some memes are IBF material, but man, yeah. he he's gonna be posting that WBC get the green belts, man. I mean, this guy's hilarious, and um, hilarious. it's just awesome. I mean, this whole Youngstown community of boxing. I mean, it's dude for such a small city, five world champions. I mean, five. Yeah. We almost had a six, dude. People don't realize that Billy Lyell had a little bit more pop on his punch. See, Billy Lyell would have won the IBF. Yeah. He would have won the IBF. Yeah. Hey, hey, check out. Where are you within arm length? Billy Lyell autograph mitt right there, baby. The pride, the pride of Ohio, Billy Lyle. Oh, man. Hey, I guess he's bringing some uh, amateurs in from Florida to Jack Lowe's show on uh, May 25th. Uh, so um, I got this. Have you have you gotten your hands on the Boxers of Youngstown book yet? No. T- dude. How do I get a hold of it? When are you coming in this summer? You coming in this summer? Okay, when you come in in August, uh, you and I will link up. We'll go to the bookstore. We'll get you a copy, and um, we'll take we'll go down, meet up with Kelly, so you can at least get it signed by Kelly, and I'll take you to meet the author and get it signed to it by him. Awesome, man. Yeah, I'm doing a. Uh, so I'm putting. I got my first. My first book will be out, but the second one, Kelly's in it. It's uh It's just about world champions that I've spoken to. Yeah. But but back to. I'm glad you brought Jack up, man. You mentioned Salem. We we mentioned Youngstown Boxing Club. You didn't mention Southside. Is that because that's that goes without saying, or is Jack still doing Southside? Dude, um, I think people I, doing what I do. I guess I kind of got to have a home base, right? Um, Southside Boxing Club's kind of my home base. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Vinny, Vinny O'Neill's become one of my best friends, and um, dude, I'll tell you what. Um, I mean, the story of how I came up with this website. So, um, just it's because I. I got tired of saying results of boxing matches and I didn't realize they were going on. Mm. And I'm like, well, who's covering boxing now? Who's doing this? You know? And, um, you know, I built a website for Liberty football who I keep stats for. And I said, you know, I got the knowledge to build a website. I can write a little bit. And I decided, you know, I want to start this website. And I was Facebook friends with um, Vinny O'Neill just based on mutual friends and uh, posting a boxing. I never met the guy before though, you know, uh. and I messaged him. I said, Vinny, um, my name is Brian. We're friends on Facebook, but I love boxing and I want to start a boxing website. Um, how do I get my foot in the door and make some context? And he goes, come down to Southside Boxing Club today. Hmm. I go down there. I'm nervous. I mean, of I didn't course. really know the Youngstown boxing, you know, thing. And me and Vinny sat at the end of the ring and we're just talking, spitting ideas off each other. You know what I mean? Um, this would have been April of 2017. Mm. And um, Jack Lowe comes walking in, you know, Jack Lowe's Southside Box Club. I mean, I saw this guy on pay-per-view is getting in Kelly's face, you know. Um, you better double up that jab, you know. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's Jack, you know. I mean, he's an intimidating guy a little bit, you know. I mean, he he's he's what is Youngstown Boxing guy, you know what I mean? When, when you think of Youngstown Boxing, you know, trainers, you think Jack Lowe, you know. And uh, Vinny's like, you, you want to go meet Jack? I'm like, Dude, I'm passive. You know what I mean? I get nervous. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know. And uh, we go into Jack's office, and Vinny's like, hey, this guy wants to start a boxing website, you know. And, and Jack just looks, he's like, what do you need from me? And I said, not money. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I said, I just don't know where to get my foot in the door. And he goes, Popo's got a fight coming up. 
Um, just come down. You're covering it. Um, you're welcome in this gym whenever you want. And you know what? I ran with that. I just started going to the gym like twice a week, hanging out, you know, sometimes every day of the week. Uh, me and Jack would just sit in his office. We'd talk boxing. He, you know, we'd talk stories about Cali. Um, Jack welcomed me with our open arms, you know what I mean? And uh, Jack's become one of one of my closest uh, people now, man. I, I love going down there just talking to Jack. If You know, when I was walking through the YSU tailgate with my uh, friend Eric's uh, brother-in-law, um, we're walking. We had tickets for the YSU North Dakota State game, and Jack Lowe stops me. And the look on this kid's face was like, you, you know Jack Lowe? You know Jack Lowe? Oh, yeah, I know Jack Lowe. But, um, no, Jack Lowe is – um he's put in his time, man, and he's earned it. Um, Jack's Jack, though. You know what I mean? Um, he uh, – one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to cross Jack Lowe. But, um, you know, Jack tells me a lot of stuff in confidence, you know, and he always lets me know. I'll let you know when you can make a story out of this. You know what I mean? And um, he, he, he didn't trust me. Um, Vinny O'Neill trusts me. A lot of these trainers, um, Tom Cordell, Sammy Calderon, um, the fighters, Danny Rosenberger, Alejandro Popo Salinas, um, all these amateurs, man, they've come to trust me. They know I'm not going to do them dirty. Um, yeah. they know I don't, they know I'm the fan of theirs. They, you know, even these guys in Pittsburgh, Vinny, I, I can't tell you, um, or, uh, John, I can't tell you the connections I made in Pittsburgh's been phenomenal. Um, I've regionalized a little bit, you know, I'll do some stuff in Cleveland, I do some stuff in Pittsburgh, but the Cle- the Pittsburgh boxing scene right now is phenomenal. As I said, you know, the Conway brothers, um, two Ukrainian kids that transplanted, they're playing for a guy named, uh, Mike McSorley, um, Oleg Dovin and, uh, Lumbar Pinchik, um, two guys worth looking up. I mean, just great dudes, uh, everybody in Pittsburgh, but, um, I think when I really realized that, um, I was making an impact was Memorial Day, Labor, Labor Day weekend this past year. So, um, in the, this past fall, and I went to the fights at, um, Mountaineer, and I was walking out of the fights, and that Matt Conway from Pittsburgh is 16 and 0 lightweight. He was out there with his dad and his um other trainers, and he didn't fight that night, but they all stopped me, and they go, "Hey Brian, how's it going?" You know, they they know me from being at all the fights in Pittsburgh and stuff, and um and um his dad said to me, "Hey, I just want to thank you for you know covering my son, doing interviews with him, getting in the publication because you know what he said." F these local papers in Pittsburgh. If he ever fights for a world title, you're going to be the one in the locker room getting the interview. And and that's when I realized, man, this is what it's about. It's not about patting my wallet. I mean, would it be nice to eventually maybe make money doing what I love? I mean, yeah, I think that's everybody's end game in life where work doesn't become a job, you know. But um, for now, dude, I'm just content on the thank yous that I get, um, the trust that I've built, the relationships I've built. Um, just having 